let's discuss some basics of ip subnetting why do we need ip subnetting at all and what are the advantages so what is ip subnetting first of all ip subnetting is the process of dividing a big network into smaller sub networks right a sub network or subnet is a logical subdivision of an existing ip network for example if we have 254 hosts in a network and and we divide it into two networks of 128 each so this is called subnetting means further dividing a network and there are two parts of an ip address one is called as ip address and the other one is called as subnet mask so why do we need two numbers to represent a computer or a host in a network why because both have their own purpose the first part which is called as ip address which is a number 32 bit number it tells us what is the host number while the second portion which is called subnet mask it tells us that which network does this ip address or this device belong to which means it tells its location for example from the subnet once you have more experience i can see that this computer 100033 it belongs to the second network so how did i find because i can see from the range that this network starts from the first computer has this ip address and the last one has dot 31 although it will have dot 1 dot 0 is the network number but that's a separate topic similarly i can see that this network will start from 32 up to 63 so definitely 33 belongs to this second but why and how let me give you an example let's say we have these batches of ccna which we are teaching every month every year right so here let's say we have a class the ccna batch number 25 so ccna b25 every month we have a batch and these are the roll numbers of the students there are two classes each class has 15 students so the first student number roll number is ccna b25.1 the second student is dot 2 dot 3 dot 4 and so on up to dot 15 so total 15 students similarly the second class is batch number 26 or class number 26 b26 it also has students student 1 roll number 1 roll number 2 roll number 3 b26.04.05 so on so you can clearly see the difference now can I represent students only with this number dot zero one zero two zero three? No, because we have another class which also is repeating these number dot one dot two dot three. So one two three is only the roll numbers are not enough. Similarly, can I represent all the students if I don't use these numbers? If I just use the class name, so CCNA batch twenty five. Can I use like this? No because all will be same so we need two numbers to represent each student in a specific class let's say this is like a school which has two classes only so first student in the class number 25 second student of class number 25 so two portions in each of them first portion is called as network number similar to ip address which means class number and the second portion represents student number in that particular class Similarly, in class number 26, CCNA batch number 26, we have student 1, student 2, student 3, up to 15 students. So, two portions. Similarly, in IP addresses, we have two portions. One is called as network portion and the other one is called as the host portion and they are decided by subnet mask. So, subnet mask is very, very important. Without that, IP address is just a number it is not much useful because we cannot know about its network so I hope it's clear to you through this example that why do we need IP address and subnet mask this is very important interview question as well very favorite question of the interviewers okay after this what is subnetting some basic things about subnetting so current standard of ip subnetting or ip or internet protocol is rfc 791 the most famous rfc out of all the rfcs rfcs are the documents actually uh, we can say the literature documents which tell us about a protocol similarly ospf has another rfc rfc is request for comments this is a document actually which defines the whole protocol whole 
notification about the network or anything this one came in 1981 so it is in simple words it's a document very very important document let me show you about this document so we can go here and search for rfc 791 and press enter in the google so it gives us these results this is the official one rfc-editor.org you can open this one or if you want a good graphical one so you can open this one this is a third party website so here we can see that this one tells us that rfc 791 was a standard which came in september 1981 and the status is this and it obsoletes there was a previous standard 760 before it so if you want to be an expert in networks you must study these important rfcs especially this ip rfc ospf vlan these kind of protocols so here you can download the txt version or the uh, xml version so let's say we go with the txt version we can download this sorry you clicked the wrong one okay this text one or the pdf so here from the text we can see that this will tell us about the motivation about interfaces about relation to other protocols so this is all about the internet protocol 791 similarly we can use another website this one uh, data tracker dot ietf this is also kind of official one so this gives us a little bit more graphical view here it is telling us that okay this document the current version is 791 which we are studying and we can read this in txt html pdf or other formats and this was updated by rfc 1349 there are few more updates to this rfc whenever update comes it will be mentioned on that page and it's obsoleted this rfc rfc 760 which was the old old rfc so you can read through these rfcs if you want to become expert i will share this link with you guys in the comments below okay coming back so ip address is actually a 32 bit number these are important points if we want to understand the subnetting in detail so the current rfc is 791 please go through it one time it is a 32 bit number all ip addresses which has two portions one is network and the other one is host and i just told you what is host portion why is it useful what is network portion why is it useful and ip address is always <coughs> represented by dotted decimal notation which means a decimal number and a dot a decimal number and a dot and so on and then we can write subnet mask like this or in this format also dotted decimal or in slash format there are two types classless and classful ip addressing first and last ip of each subnet or network is not usable and we cannot assign to the host this is very important point of the for the ip subnetting and ip subnet mask can be written in dotted decimal or binary format both so which means that we can either write 10.0.0.1 like this means a decimal number a normal number and a dot in between or we can convert this 10 into 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. so we can simply use a calculator and in the calculator we can write like decimal to binary converter so here we can go to the decimal to binary converter so we go with 10 we choose decimal and then we can click on the binary so it tells us 1010 0, 0, which means that if we want to make it full binary like in the eight digits so we can put all zeros on the left so this becomes 0000, 0, 0, 0 and 1010 0, 0. this is how we can convert through calculator but we will learn by hands that how we can calculate this one but this can be written in decimal format and it can be written in binary format both ip and subnet mask both <clears throat> so these are some important points ip about ip subnetting this is also another example let's say we have a big class of 100 students this class so either we can have one class in one school or we can divide this one into two smaller classes of 50 50 students so this is called subnetting in simple words similarly if we talk of in terms of ip addresses then let's say we have a network 192.168.0.0 we will have 256 hosts because of slash 24 how it tells us we will see later on but these 256 hosts we can divide into two 
which means out of these 256 people or 256 computers or hosts we can give 128 here and 128 here and this 24 you might be observing becomes 25 so 192.168.0.0 slash 25 which means this one will have 128 total hosts and 192.168.0.128 slash 25 will also have 128 hosts so this is an example of ip subnetting similarly if we have a big big school we can divide it in further into classes classes into groups and here let's say we have this big black box the whole subnet is 1000 slash 24 which means 256 hosts how we will see later on so this one can be divided into two big groups one is 10000 slash 25 and the other one is 10.00 slash 25 and this slash 25 we can further divide it into two parts these two red parts one is slash 26 the other one is so the number of hosts will be half of the 25 similarly here we can divide it into two portions or like total three portions one is with slash 26 the other one is 26 or this 26 can be further divided into two portions so in this way we can keep on dividing according to our requirements which we will see in our further examples practice examples but still a question might come into your mind that why we need ip addresses right practically let's say somebody tells you that okay we have this subnet 10.0.0.0 a company asks you and we have purchased like um, 30 plus 27 plus 30 plus 2 and 2 so these number of computers are links and we want to assign ip addresses to them so please dear ip engineer it engineer help me to divide this subnet the, into these smaller networks these five networks so that this network should have 30 computers 30 ip addresses this one should have 27 this network between two routers should have two ip addresses this one should have two ip addresses because it's also a network each port on a router is a network and this one has 30 so total five networks one two three four and five how do we divide of course through subnetting if we don't know subnetting we cannot divide and this is how it will be divided total 256 IP addresses which have been divided into these five subnet the first one has 32 IP addresses we can assign here the second one 32 again we assign here because 27 falls under 32 this third one here and the last two here and here and how it happens we will see in further examples in this series of IP subnetting so this is why we need IP subnetting I hope it was clear to you guys about some basics of IP subnetting in the next video series in the next videos of this series we will go through the IP address classes that which classes do we have in IP addresses and the why do we need it how it is helpful in IP subnetting so stay tuned